We'll welcome you all to today's meeting of the Planning Applications Committee. <coughs> we'll get and I apologise that there didn't seem to be enough seats for, for everybody. Um, as I said at the last meeting, we're currently uh, suffering from some technology problems in the chamber where we normally meet because of accommodating spent people. So, uh, we've had to move into this room <coughs> temporarily, hopefully. Um, <coughs> item one on the agenda is the evacuation procedure. Um, we're not expecting any practice allowance to go off, so if we do go off, we'll treat it for real. And if we can vacate this room through, well, there's only the one door, down the main staircase and meet across the road by the Yorkshire Bank. If anybody uh, needs any assistance in uh, getting out of the building, give us a shout, we'll make sure that assistance is given. It's also a good time to remind people to turn their phones off or to put them on silent, please. Uh, and the, the other thing I, I do need to advise you that um, as in the majority of meetings now, uh, the council records all their meetings and they're put out on YouTube the, the day after or a couple of days after the meeting. Okay, thank you. Item number two, uh, to receive apologies for absence. Bad apologies from councillors Glass and Beaumont. Yeah, that right then, dear. Yeah. Uh, and I think apart from that, everybody else is here. Item three is to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 30th of October. Are you happy that I sign those? Yes, Chair. Receive declarations of disclosable pecuniary and, and other interest in accordance with the member's code of conduct uh, if it's not already listed or when it becomes apparent at that particular item. Okay, thank you. Item number five is declarations of contact. Before I ask anybody else, can I just say that I did meet with some residents. Uh, in regard to the item number two, um, as not as is my normal way, I didn't indicate, make any indication of how we vote until I've heard all the objections and support, whatever, till the meeting. Uh, and also, I think all members will be aware, I believe we've all been given a copy of a letter, well, a note from Councillor Condor called in relation to that same application. Okay, anybody else? Yeah. Councillor Graham. Thank you, Chair. I met with the um, applicants of item number four, but as usual, to give any indications <coughs> of which way I may or may not vote. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that takes us on to the applications uh, where the public have indicated a, a desire to speak. If I could just uh, run through that for those people that have maybe not been along before. <coughs> what would happen is the officer will present the report to the committee. Um, following on from that, we'll take the speakers as listed. And just for information uh, for the members, if I could just point you to your list of speakers under item number one, it will be Mrs. Callan. That's speaking, not Mr. Callan. Item number two, uh, to replace Councillor Condacor as a speaker, it will be Mr. Patel. And we can also add Councillor Walmsley as a ward councillor to that. To that <coughs> Point of order, I want to now speak because I'm Councillor, a Councillor Condacor. You don't, you don't have to grandstand. You've already explained it to me. No, no. You, you, you've explained to me... You've included Councillor Walmsley. Councillor Condacore, you've explained to me that you've allowed 
Mr Patel to replace you as the Speaker. That's all Mr. Walsley is Mr. not Walsley the Ward Councillor. Mr Walsley is the Wellington Councillor like me. So either Mr Walsley can speak and I can speak, or neither of us. You can't have... Oh, 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 hang on. This is for number two, which is listed as St Nicholas, I believe. Yeah. I've been told that Councillor Walsley doesn't represent that. I, I asked earlier and was told he did, but... Uh, what ward do you represent, Councillor? Well, is he here? Oh, he's there. Councillor Walsley, what ward, do you, what ward do you represent? Wellington, sir. OK. This doesn't lie within Wellington. The hedge does. This is the problem. This doesn't lie within Wellington. I, I've, I've sought advice. I've sought advice from the planning officers and been told that it's not in Wellington. Uh, yeah, I agree, Chair. And if I may embrace a point uh, with you, uh, yeah. but it's been custom and practice in the past where it's on the boundary. Uh, and Councillor Condacour has de uh, benefited from this <coughs> several times himself, most recently with the Lidl application, um, where it's St Nicholas Wellington, we've had a councillor uh, from each speak. Well, um, well Councillor, can I say, I don't, I don't believe it's been custom and practice. I don't, recall, I, don't, I don't recall it being custom and practice and that happening. If it's happened, it may well be because there was room on the list for a, an additional speaker. My ruling is Councillor Wormsley won't speak in, so it's the. So he can't. Louder, like so the, well, the same thing would have happened. Councillor Condicle was allowed to speak. Councillor Trovers, I've made my ruling. You know, I'm sorry if people don't like it. There's an avenue to, to make an objection to that if you don't like it. Right, I've forgotten where I was now. Yes, I'll, I'll go back to the, the start of it is the officers will present the report. Following on from that, I'll take a list of speakers <coughs> as that, with the removal of Councillor Walmsley. <coughs> um, <coughs> under the Constitution, speakers are allowed three minutes. Uh, I will be strict on that. When the egg timer goes off, I'll stop people from speaking. However, uh, members can ask for a point of clarification. It can only be uh, to clarify something that's been said in, the, in, in, what the, in what the person said in their presentation. Again, following on from that, officers may uh, wish to make further points. If not, once something has been moved and seconded uh, from the committee, we'll then go into a debate and hopefully we'll, we'll make a decision today. I say hopefully, in the majority of cases we do make those decisions. Uh, but in some cases, items are deferred for site visits or for further information. Okay. Thank you. So the first item was our earlier site visit today to the Chestnuts Pebble. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> this application is for a two-storey and single-storey extension to the rear of number one of the Chestnuts. Notwithstanding the objections received, the application is also being reported to committee at the request of Councillor Graham. It was deferred from the last committee to carry out a site visit to assess the impact on the amenities of the neighbouring <coughs> properties. This was carried out this afternoon. The proposal property is a relatively large detached property on the Chestnuts, which is located on Woodlands Park, just off Silver Birch Avenue. <coughs> the house is two-storey gabled roof with a two-storey gable projection to the front. The house has a single-storey garage to the side with a sloping roof and canopy to the front elevation. There are many other two-storey detached properties around the application site, but also some bungalows on the Chestnuts and some on the Rowans. To either side of the proposal property are numbers 28 Silver Birch Avenue, and number two, the Chestnut, which are both two-storey detached residential properties. In regard to the impact on residential amenity, there are two properties mainly affected, which are the two neighbouring properties, number 28, Silver Birch Avenue, which is that property there, and number two, the Chestnuts. Number two, the Chestnuts, that one there, is sited to the east of the proposal, and is in closest proximity to the two-storey section of the extension, and that is the blue area shown on the screen. The proposed extension would run roughly parallel to the boundary between the two gardens. 
The rear of number two is set roughly half a metre further back than the original of number one, which means that around 3.5 metres of the four metres extension would project beyond the rear of number two. <coughs> the extension will be set around one metre from the boundary. And as such, it is considered that this will not create a significant level of harm to the immediacy of the garden area of number two. Number two has some rear-facing um, ground floor windows, but the distance standards within the design guide are met. The nearest ground floor window in this section here serves a non-habitable room and is therefore not protected. Distance standards are also met in relation to first floor windows. No side facing windows are proposed in the extensions and as such there is no significant loss of privacy as a result of the proposals. Number 28, which is that property there, Silver Birch Avenue, is closer to the proposed single storey extension which is the area highlighted in red. Number 28 has a side facing kitchen window which will face the side elevation here of the proposed single storey extension. However, this is not the primary window to the room as there is a larger window in the front elevation and therefore is not protected. Distance standards within the design guide are met. It is therefore not considered that there will be any significant harm on the immunity of that property. The proposed extensions are to the rear of uh, number one. So in here. And because of this, there will be very little impact on the street scene. There will be only fleeting glimpses of the extensions within the street scene of one of the chestnuts, the Rowans and Silver Birch Avenue. There are some trees in the vicinity covered by a TPO, including T27 located in the rear garden of the application site, which is located there. It is an oak tree um, and a tree report has been submitted by the applicant and has been assessed by the Parks and Countryside Tree Officer and no objection was raised. Conditions are recommended which would help to protect the trees during construction and <coughs> storage of materials under the tree. The recommendations therefore approval, subject to conditions are set out on the agenda. Thank you, Excuse me. Alan Edwards. Yeah. Um, and I should just say, for those people that are speaking, we do have a chair for a speaker, but if you feel comf more comfortable where you are, that's fine. <coughs> as long as we can hear you. Right? Make it short. <laughs> okay. Mr. Edwards. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think I'll just I'll keep this very short. I covered most of the points last mass, at the last meeting. Um, the only thing, some of you have been out and seen the property. Um, I, the thing I'll ask you to do is take into consideration the huge detrimental effect it's going to have on us, number two. It's going to spoil the garden, which is very important to us. It's a lot worse than what it showed on the plan to those who haven't seen it. Um, that's it. I'm not going to repeat everything I said last time. That's it. Okay, thank you. Are there any points of clarification? No. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Bob Flynn. Mr. Flynn? Yeah, so after the side visit today, um, which I appreciate you coming to see, uh, I think I've said all I need to say, and you've seen what you've seen. So, I don't need to make any further statements. Okay, thank you. I do have to ask if there's any points of clarification. No, okay, thank you. <coughs> um, Mrs. Callum. Uh, when you do. Okay. So 
Good afternoon, councillors and members of the public. I'm here today as the owner of Wanda Chestnuts to speak in favour for the planning application. I'm going to discuss each objection which was raised um, against it individually. Mr Edwards from number two, the Chestnuts, claims that the back of his house is in line with the back of my house and he's provided photographic evidence. However, it's only the back of his utility that is in line with the back of my house, which is not a habitable room. The rest of the house is approximately one metre rearwards of my house, which has been measured. The extension is in line with permitted guidelines set by Residential Guide 2004. A 45 degree line drawn from these habitable windows is not breached and is considered to have no unacceptable impact on the rear facing windows of number two, the chestnuts. There is no reduction to sunlight to the back of number two, the chestnuts, as 28 Silver Birch Avenue extends around six metres from the back of my ward. With my extension, I'm still not in line with 28 Silver Birch Avenue and light travels in straight lines and thus my extension will have no neg negligible effect onto the gardens of number two, the chestnuts. In the last committee, Mr Edwards' comments about my existing bathroom window were unjustified and uncalled for. The new bathroom window will have obscure glass as the existing one to keep visibility to a minimum. Mr Edwards says that I will be able to see my bathroom window into his utility, through to his kitchen and through to his lounge. I find this very hard as it is impossible to see through brick walls and corners. Also, there is a concern from Mr Edwards regarding the oak tree. The extension will take place keeping in mind the complete health of the tree as confirmed by the tree survey. Pruning the trees will be required, however, this will not cause the tree to topple over and permission will be seek from the council and work will be carried out by tree professionals. The tree report clearly suggests that there are no roots in the vicinity of the extension and the extension will have no impact to the tree. The footings will be in line with the building regulations and considering the surrounding areas of the tree. In response to Mr Flynn at 28 Silver Birch Avenue, the summary of his objections relate to block light and air from his kitchen side window. I disagree as 28 Silver Birch Avenue has a big kitchen window on the south side which stays under direct sunlight during most of the day. I'm only doing a single storey extension on, on this side which is adjacent to 28 Silver Birch Avenue and this would not deprive this property of any sunlight or air. Furthermore, the side of 28 Silver Birch Avenue will be <coughs> two metres away from my single storey extension. Also, the back of the house with, it, with the extension will be 1.25 metres inwards to 28 Silver Birch Avenue and not half a metre as discussed at the site visit today. There are similar extensions in the neighbourhood which have been approved, so I hereby wholeheartedly request the councillors to make a decision based on planning laws and the facts presented. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any points of clarification? No. Okay, thank you. Anything you need to put back on? No? In that case, to enable debate to, be, to, to take place, can I move the recommendation printed, which is to grant planning permission subject to the conditions printed? Is that seconded? I'll second that, Any member? Councillor Gray. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I do have um, uh, sympathy for some of the concerns that have been raised here, in particular uh, number 42, because, sorry, 32, uh, because the, um, although uh, as the officers have guided, the primary window is the south facing one, it seems to me that de facto uh, in this household it is actually the one facing eastwards. And the size difference to me seems to be quite negligible. Uh, and a lot of visibility and light would be lost from what I saw today. Uh, and on the other hand, I do sympathise with um, people who uh, do want extensions <coughs> as long as it doesn't impact on others negatively. It's a bit of a difficult one because the uh, planning laws face one way and I'm just concerned that at the end of this, um, the neighbours may be unhappy. Uh, but uh, if we object to this, then uh, we don't really have any planning reasons that would hold up that appeal, from my understanding. So it's not an easy one for me. Uh, and uh, I do um, uh, I have sympathy for the neighbours on both sides because I do feel that some uh, light would be lost 
Uh, I hope that the, um, the tree preservation orders and the uh, work done by the council's tree officers um, <coughs> is enough to assure that the tree won't be harmed in any particular way and that any works that take place are done so on council guidance. Um, that's all I really have to say on that one. Thank you. Is there any other member? No? In that case, the recommendation <coughs> is as printed. Home planning permission subject to the conditions printed. All those in favour of that? And against? I think that's everybody, but abstentions. Okay, so that's approved. Thank you. We move on to item number two, please. The land rear of the <coughs> 44 of the long street. is for the erection of 75 dwellings including public open space, surface water drainage, landscaping and forms phase three of the Bowways development off the long chute. This site was not included within the red line for the previous phases. To the eastern boundary is a hedgerow that separates this application site um, from the proposed calendar farm development for 850 dwellings that has been approved by committee. The proposal provides a possible vehicular access with attached cycle link through to this future development and one further cycle link. To the western boundary there is a hedgerow and a drainage ditch that separates the site from the rear garden of Foster Close and Calendar Close. To the south of the site there are houses within phase one <coughs> and to the southeast there is phase two. Notwithstanding the objections received, this application is also being reported to committee at the request of councillors Condacore and Walmsley. The objections received are detailed on the agenda, which raise issues including increased flooding, increased traffic, proximity to existing houses, impact on wildlife and impact on air pollution. The site is within the strategic housing allocation HSG1 of the Emerging Borough Plan but it was not included within the housing numbers for that allocation. It is recognised that the Council currently does not have a five-year supply of deliverable housing land to meet the identified housing need, and this development would contribute to the five-year housing land supply. This is consequently a matter which in itself carries significant weight in favour of the application. In relation to layout and design, the proposed development equates to 28 dwellings per hectare. The previous phases provided approximately 21 dwellings per hectare. The proposed density complies with policy and the MPPF states that local planning authorities should avoid approving low densities where there is a shortage of land and that developments make optimal use of the potential of each site. The proposal complies with the residential design guide in relation to distance standards to existing properties. There are some very slight infringements in terms of distance <coughs> standards within the site, but these are not significant to warrant a refusal. 25% of the dwellings are to be affordable. This is to be split between four one-bed apartments, 11 two-bedroom dwellings, which include two rentable bungalows and four three-bedroom dwellings and in two locations along, um, in the site there. In there. Housing have no objection to this as the access point for these dwellings are from different locations and therefore would seem to be spread through the site. Part of, of the reason for this is that the housing associations like their stock to be within blocks for easier maintenance. The market homes are split between 41 three-bedroom homes and 15 two-bedrooms and are largely two-storey with six two-and-a-half-storey. The design of the dwellings and as an example of the house types on the screen, 
um, and the materials are to fit with the existing bellway scheme with detailing to the eaves, brick arches to the head of some of the windows and detailing to sills. There are to be some on a pitched porch roofs above front doors and flat roof dormers to the two and a half storey houses. The finished floor levels of the houses at the northern end of the site have reduced by approximately 600 millimetres from the original scheme submitted and therefore the eaves levels will be more in keeping with the eaves of the existing houses. There, let's go back to the site plan. There is an increase in finished floor levels of some plots towards the bottom of the site of around 250 mil and 400 uh, millimetres. However, there is still well over 30 metres separation between those plots and the existing properties on Calendar Close, which easily complies with distance standards. The dwellings have two parking spaces with some additional vis visitor spaces, except for the one bedroom masonettes that have one space each plus a visitor space between them. Highways England and County Highways have both been involved during the application process and have no objections subject to conditions and a legal agreement. One of the core planning principles outlined in the MPPF outlines the need for planning to promote walking, cycling and public transport and to make the fullest possible use of these. The scheme provides both road and cycle links to the other proposed development to the northeast of the site. Um, and County Highways have requested a 106 contribution towards the provision of cycle infrastructure to connect the site to the town centre. In relation to flooding, the site is located in flood zone one, which is considerable, considered suitable for all land uses. A flood risk assessment has been provided in line with guidance and it is proposed that rainwater will be dealt via a sud system. There were a number of concerns from local residents that the proposal would exacerbate flood problems to existing houses. These objections do provide local knowledge on the ground of the ground conditions and were forwarded to the county flood risk team for their information. The county flood risk team have no objections subject to conditions. In terms of ecology, the proposal retains the hedgerows and are open up and, and are to be gapped where necessary with new hedgerow species and trees. An ecological report has been submitted which confirms no presence of protected species which the Warwick Wildlife Trust agrees with. Neighbours have confirmed that bats are present on the site, however the council's parks team consider that as the hedgerows are to be retained, that habitat can be protected but with the condition that lighting must not be allowed to affect that area. <coughs> a bi biodiversity impact assessment has been carried out and the calculation has concluded there will be a slight gain in biodiversity. There were queries with the original calculation submitted and detailed drawing files were <coughs> obtained from the applicant and the measurements were checked. A net neutral position is reached on habitat areas and a net gain is shown for linear features and hedgerows. Therefore, overall, there is a net gain in biodiversity which does comply with the MPPF. Ecology mitigation and enhancement through our biodiversity enhancement plan, bird and bat bricks and suitable lighting are controlled through a number of conditions as detailed on the agenda. A number of 106 contributions have been requested which the applicant has agreed to pay, including cycling <coughs> infrastructure, house contributions, education, libraries, sports provision and plain open space. The recommendation is therefore approval, subject to the completion of a legal agreement and the conditions as set out on the agenda. Okay, thank you, Claire. Mr. Patel. <coughs> yeah, the clock will start when you do. Okay, thank you very much. I'm speaking on behalf of the majority of the properties surrounding the application sites, myself being a resident. We would like the planning committee members to refuse the application to allow further revised information to be submitted prior to any approval being granted. It's felt the submitted scheme is not adequate in terms of the information provided with regards to particular to the site itself, those levels, drainage, layout design, and this would allow further assessment of the key issues to be resolved. The site. The planning report states that the site is not allocated as residential land. It was considered purely because of its proximity to a strategic residential site. It's not been demonstrated that there would not be a substantial cumulative detrimental impact in accordance with paragraph 48 of the MPPA on this application. 
proposed levels, which have been discussed. The proposed section submitted do not provide adequate information to indicate the scale of housing against the existing properties. Further to this, the planning report states that levels have been amended, but this has not been indicated with the submitted information to a suitable degree and is still felt to be in contrary with page 12 of the local plan in terms of scale. Drainage. The application field retains surface water for the majority of the year and is only dry during long spells. The drainage ditch does not remain dry for much of the year and normally retains water. Flood risk assessment produced by the applicant makes reference to the application site is subject to local areas of surface water flooding and further to this have stated that the environmental agency's surface water flood map does not take into consideration the current topography, which is the newly constructed phase one development, which only serves to provide additional surface water due to the houses and further hard standing in this area. It's also been noted that the properties to the south, phase one development as stated, of the site suffered waterlogged gardens that have had to be further addressed by the developer. The issue of drainage is still found to be in contrary to policy EV4. In particular, point C, the development will not give rise to increased flood risk to land and property off site. As it is currently cannot be demonstrated, the property will, the proposal will not give rise to increased risk of surface water flooding to the land and property <coughs> adjacent to the site. Conditioning and drainage as part of the application is not felt to be appropriate in this instance as it, as it is an important issue that needs to be resolved prior to any approval to ensure all parties are happy with the proposals and properties protected to avoid any further future issues. No proper consultation has taken place between the developer and local residents with any response being largely ignored and no response given to the layout remaining the same. This is contrary to MPPF section 12 which states Applicants should work closely with those affected by the proposals to evolve designs to take account of the views of the community. In conclusion, <coughs> while the need for housing is appreciated, it should not be to the potential detriment of the existing properties which should be taken into consideration as part of this application. It is felt that the current scheme would materially harm the character and appearance of the area and the living conditions of neighbouring occupiers in the current state. The application should not be granted. <coughs> I've just got this last paragraph, if that's okay. The application should not be granted with key aspects being conditioned as it is a, as it is a fear that these will simply move the concerns of the residents to someone else. Then it will be too late to fully assess the application. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Are there any points of clarification? <coughs> no? Chair Binder? Oh, sorry, Councillor Pogfrey. Uh, could I ask uh, Mr Patel um, why... Um, the Watch County Council at Flood Risk Team, why in his opinion, the Watch County Council Flood Risk Team have come to a uh, conclusion contrary to his own? I'm sorry, could you expand what do you mean contrary to my own? Well, the, the, the Flood Risk Team have come to a different conclusion. That no, they've, they've said that um, the planning report states that the flood risk and drainage will be conditioned as a number of conditions, and what I'm saying is we would like these conditions to be considered prior to approval, as once it's approved, it, it just gives the development carte blanche to get on with this development. And, you know, I'm not saying that they'll brush it under the table, but it needs to be resolved now. This flooding is an issue for the residents as well. Yeah, the yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mr. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Chair. Uh, I think our office is going to be necessary to talk about. When we get into the debate. Mm -hmm. uh, Melanie Allen. I request a decision on this application be deferred until all committee members have visited the site and considered the points being made. This is not an objection against development but against plans which are ill thought out and show no regard to the impact on residents whose properties form the western boundary of the site demonstrated by a paragraph in Bowway's planning statement stating, a new area of public open space is proposed to the south of the site, strategically located to create a green gateway, assisting the transition from low density housing within phase one to high density housing in phase three. There is no such public open space between properties on the western boundary to assist in the transition from low to high density housing, just a five metre easement. Greendale Road in Phase 1, which forms the south boundary, has public open space but a mid park <coughs> to it. If the plans proposed or approved, Greendale Road can enjoy open space to the front and rear of their properties. Excuse me. 
completed phase one and phase two under construction consists mainly of four and five bed properties. Phase three consists of one, two and three beds. During a site visit, a member of the committee stated the intention is to have greater diversity in the developments to pepper pot smaller properties with larger. This is not demonstrated in railways development as most of the smaller properties are coming to phase three. Would it not be better to redesign and complete phase two to include a greater portion of smaller properties and for phase three to include larger, creating greater diversity throughout the development as a whole? Design and materials are used, used to fit with the existing railway scheme, but the properties will be closer in proximity to Gloucester Close and Calendar Close. The hedgerows and surrounding. The land and surrounding hedgerows have not been managed for many years and diversity of wildlife returning to inhabit the area has increased considerably, but biodiversity and ecology report is based on intensely managed land. That specific survey has not been completed, despite residents advising presence of a bat population on the western boundary. A condition has been put forward that lighting should not be allowed to affect this area, but plans of houses facing this boundary with street lighting. If street lighting were to be removed, this corridor would be a potential magnet for crime. A pool forms in the centre of the ground to the west of the site. Sorry, a pool forms in the centre and the ground to the west of the site becomes waterlogged with existing drainage falls throughout the winter months. The SUDs are planned for the southern boundary public haven space. A more sensible position for the SUDs would be in the west along the western boundary to resolve the issue of the ground being waterlogged, but it would also provide the back population on the western boundary which is protected by law with a greater foraging area without the street light disturbance. <coughs> in addition to many flaws in the plans for this site... Are you nearly finished? Nearly, yeah. You should already have information on the schools crisis in the area. There was a child living on the Bowway development that has not attended school for almost two terms because the nearest school place they've been offered is in Bedworth and as a single parent family, they can't afford the travel costs to that school. Okay, this is a situation that needs addressing. Okay, thank you. I'm going to stop there because it's gone over. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any points of clarification? Can I ask a question about representation? No. Sorry. You can after the meeting. Okay. We're not speakers. Sorry? Okay. We're not speakers. speakers on the agenda. Councillor Troman. Thank you, Chair. I'm speaking against this application as the proposal to put relatively high density housing on some of the last remaining countryside in the area. <coughs> the land is not in the borough plan. Being near land that's in the borough plan is not at all the same as being in the borough plan and counted in the numbers. So the land's either in or it's out. Uh, if I can refer members of the committee to pages 30 and 31, you'll see that the land is actually designated as EMG3 countryside. The presumption for this land is therefore against development and indeed pages 30 and 31 list those exceptional conditions that would need to apply for land to be built on it. Things like A, it's necessary to meet the needs of farming and forestry and agricultural industries, well clearly it doesn't do that. Uh, re um, relates to reuse of existing buildings, again none of this applies. So clearly this application doesn't meet those tests uh, and would not to any reasonably objective person. Even if the tests were met, page 31 is clear that there are further tests that would need to be applied. Like one, uh, it would not harm the overall character and quality of the countryside. Well, it can't help but harm the character of this remaining piece of countryside because it would completely replace it with high density housing. Also, the proposal includes three storey flats uh, and these are not at all in, in keeping with the visual amenity of the area, Gloucester and Calendar Close. Uh, another one of the secondary tests would be failed by that. So this application should not go ahead. It should be refused for those sound uh, and supportable planning reasons that I've listed. Unfortunately, we've seen that sound uh, reasoning hasn't always been enough to protect St Nicholas and Weddington from overdevelopment in the past. Overdevelopment that at the same time has had underinvestment in infrastructure and local amenities. The local roads are at gridlock and we don't need a formal objection from highways to tell us that. The point of having local council planning committees is that they appreciate the detail of local issues on the ground, or at least they're supposed to. So you haven't got to have a formal ob objection from others to be able to use your knowledge and discretion about roads and about water logging and drainage and all the rest of it. 
I hope this planning committee will decide to do the right thing this evening and reject the application for the reasons I've already explained and also because the application is not sustainable given that schools, doctors and other services are already massively oversubscribed. The reasons I have raised should be enough but I'm sure at some point tonight the myth of the five year land supply will be brought up as justification to build. A land supply formula that conveniently makes the target forever unachievable. Fortunately, we now have enough evidence locally that there is not the market capacity in the immediate area to sustain the level of completions to meet the target. So evidence proves that simply granting yet another planning application in this same area will not make any meaningful <coughs> contribution towards that particular target. An application on the other side of the borough where housing is not, uh, new housing is not at saturation point might be able to claim a nominal control contribution, but not this particular area. So members, please use your own judgment. You're entitled to do that. Uh, you have the power. That's the point of local planning committees. Otherwise, officers would just decide everything. Thank you, Ken. Clarification? No. Mr. O'Hanlon. Chairman, members of the committee, thank you for this opportunity to speak. <coughs> the application before you is for 75 new homes and represents the third phase of residential development by Bellway Homes at Land Off the Long Chute. Members have previously approved the first and second phases of development. Phase one is now completely sold out and construction is well underway on phase two. This third phase of development is located to the north of phase one and will form a natural extension to this recently completed development. The proposed calendar farm scheme for 850 dwellings that has been approved by this committee is located to the east of this site and there will be linkages for vehicles, pedestrians and cyclists between the Bellway Phase 3 site and the calendar farm development. Contrary to page 31 of your committee report and as was confirmed by the officer in her uh, presentation, the proposed site is within the wider strategic housing allocation HSG1 that the Council is supporting through the Borough Plan, Borough Plan process. The draft allocation is the largest outside of the urban area and will be necessary to meet long-term housing needs. This application includes 25% affordable housing and is therefore policy compliant. In total, 19 of the dwellings will be affordable and this weighs in favour of the proposals. The Borough Council does not have a five-year deliverable housing land supply and the application delivers social, environmental and economic benefits which are positive aspects within this planning balance. There are no statutory objections to the proposals. Bellway Homes have worked with your officers and consultees to ensure that the scheme is acceptable and a number of amendments have been made to the scheme during the course of the application. These have included moving development away from the existing hedgerow on the eastern boundary to ensure its retention, the inclusion of cycle and pedestrian links to the adjacent parcels of development land, <coughs> amendments to house types on the western boundary to improve their relationship to existing properties. The layout of the proposed development has been subject to detailed comments from your planning, housing and highways officers and no objections have been raised. The proposed scheme would result in a density of approximately 28 dwellings per hectare and this fully complies with the separation distances set out in the Council's residential design guidance in relation to existing properties. The improvements to the junction onto the long chute are currently being implemented and this will provide the additional capacity for the proposed development to come forward. The internal road layout and parking provision for the new dwellings within the proposed scheme is agreed by your highways officers in their consultation response. The County Council's flood team have reviewed the proposed drainage strategy and confirmed that they have no objection from a flooding and drainage perspective subject to conditions. And this drainage strategy takes account of the existing topography of the site. Just one more. That's okay. Be quick. Yep. <laughs> Uh, finally, as set out in your officer's report, Bellway Homes have accepted a reduced time limit for the expiration of any planning permission that is granted by the committee, reflecting our commitment to deliver these new homes quickly Thank in order you, to meet the demand that currently exists. Thank you. If you just remain <coughs> one moment, are there any points of clarification? Councillor Smith. 
Yeah, just one clarification. You state that this has, is actually in HSG1. Yes. Clearly the officers who created that plan say it isn't in HSG1. I just wonder why. I believe there was an error in the officer's report. I had confirmation this afternoon oh, from right? Jackie. Yes. Okay. Are there any other points of clarification? Uh, sorry, can I just ask one, just so that I'm clear on it? Um, <coughs> you mentioned that, I think you said phase one had been sold. Correct. Phase two is under construction. Correct. It, it was suggested by an earlier speaker that, that uh, maybe these things weren't moving ahead and being sold as planned. It, in your opinion, well, you, you said phase one's all sold out. Phase one is completely sold out, 126 uh, houses. What, and what, what about phase two? Phase two is under construction and is, is selling very well. It's still got a very good sales rate at the moment. You know, we believe that this development would okay. appeal to yeah. well, you know, the market that is there at the moment and that's why we're, okay. that's why we're here. I, I only wanted to ask because I do have two sides of the thing. I mean, it's for us to take a balance on that. I'm sorry, I can't, I'm not allowed to bring you back in. Um, well, are there any other further points of clarification? No? And you can come back on this point, Claire? Claire? Can I just ask it? No? Can I just ask it? I'm sorry, I'm not... It's a question. I'm sorry, I can't. I'm not allowed to bring you in under the... No, it's about a question already asked about this. Is it in the plan or not? I'm sorry, you're not down as a speaker. I'm not allowed to bring you into it. Don't, don't shoot the messenger, please. I don't know why I'm here. Um, right, and so I should have said earlier as well, we've got Ben Sim here from the county, if there's any uh, highways questions to be, to be asked. Right, so have you got nothing to come back on at the moment? We've had all the speakers. So as I usually say, to enable debate to take place, can I move the recommendation which is printed which is to grant planning permission subject to a legal agreement and the conditions printed. Is that seconded? Seconded. <coughs> Any member? <coughs> Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Chair. I'd like a, before I go into the majority of my comments, I'd like clarification from the officers, please. Because the report quite clearly states that the third paragraph of page 31 that this land is not included within the council's housing figures, and I'm quoting here, or was previously allocated as residential land. However, the land is immediately adjacent to the strategic residential site of HSG1 within the Emerging Borough Plan, which is correct. It does fall within the overall boundary of HSG1, but it wasn't included in the numbers of the map. HSG1. Was it on the map? Yes. Oh, the map if anybody would like to see it. Yes, please. I'll bring it round to you. If that's okay with you, Chair. Well, well, it is, but unless everybody's going to see it, I feel that's a bit unfair. Yeah. If the office is saying it's on the map, it's on the map. Right, that's fine. Do, um, what do other members feel about that? Are you happy on that? That's or do you all want to take time it. to see that? Or for the officer to... Speak to me. Sit round. I think I'd like a little bit more information about this. If they say it's in the HSG one, but it wasn't designated in the figures, i.e. not to be built on, what, what does that actually mean? Can you clarify what it was designated for in HSG one if it wasn't for building property on? As I said, fell within that, that whole allocation. Um, the allocation itself doesn't pinpoint specific areas of HSG1 which would be built on or not. It does, as I said, does form part of that whole allocation, but um, didn't, as I said, didn't form part of the final numbers to be generated from that allocation. So it's still within that, the boundary, red line of that allocation. So, so, the, so that I'm absolutely clear about things as well. I want if Councillor Wilson could just ask that question again, please, about whether it's on that map or not. Just so that I'm clear. 
So can you confirm that this site that we're con considering tonight is actually part of the HSG1 proposed allocation? But from what you were saying, it would be, as I understand it, Chair, a windfall site because you weren't including it in the original five and a half thousand houses which are proposed across HSG1. Yes. But then you have to consider the, the other issue, the five-year housing land to plan, how it contributes to that. Right. Okay, Chair. So the, the, the answer is, it is, from the officers, it is within that. In, Chair, I think, I think this is a bit like playing a game of the hokey cokey. It's in and it's out, and it's in and it's out. Because well, this report. Like, I'm sorry, Council, you've said it's in. But this report is extremely misleading in that case, and that is what members of the public, and until we got here tonight, were considering. I don't remember, and uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, I don't remember seeing it as, an, as an, an amendment in the addendum either. I've only just glanced at the addendum, but I don't remember seeing it in there. If this was identified as an error, with respect, Chair, this, com this paper should have been pulled and reissued. And then I could comment <coughs> on it. I can't comment no, on it. So I'll go on to my comments then, Chair, because I think we're going to get as good an answer as we're going to get on this one. So moving forward, I think this is a <coughs> misconceived application. We are already on that side of town at breaking point, if not actually exceeding it in some areas. We are building right up to the boundary of the A5, beyond what was originally published in the Emerging Borough Plan. We have no more, virtually, green lungs on that side of the town to help deal with the issues which are being faced. Now, if we take this piece of land away, Chair, we will be removing probably the last green lung in St Nicholas and Weddington because we're building so much. Any <coughs> surgeon will tell you, you remove a lung, it's not going to help the overall body of the person. And I think we are reaching that point. Now, I accept the point it's within the boundaries of um, HSG1, but it is not within the numbers. Personally, to me, with us being so close, if, we're, if we believe what the portfol portfolio holder tells us, with the time scales in terms of approving the borough plan, we are within a cat's whisker of approval, assuming the inspector doesn't throw any spanner in the works. But the portfolio holder is telling us he doesn't believe that there will be any spanner in the works. So, according to this, at paragraph 48 of the MPPF, we should give increasing weight to the emerging borough plan. And I think because this is exceeding the numbers which the council has been pushing in the borough plan and making great representations on in the borough plan, I sat through some of that evidence, we should reject it on that basis. Um, if you look at ENV3, which this land is currently designated, most of all the other applications we've considered have said that because we don't have a five-year housing land supply, there is a demonstrable need which meets the ENV3 uh, criteria for building on it. But the council is now going, and, it's, and there's been reports to Cabinet saying that if and when the borough plan is approved, we will meet our five-year housing land supply, and they're planning on exceeding it, the five-year housing land supply, if that is approved. This site is not needed at this time, Chair. I don't think there is a demonstrable need that cannot be met within the urban area if you believe the plans which have been put forward by this council. In my view, they're flawed, but that's what the council wants to go with. And it says <coughs> that, and I think this is where officers will try and, and get me uh, on this one, it says paragraph 49 states that refusal on the grounds of prematurity is not justified where sites are presumed to be sustainable. They're presuming the site is sustainable. And where it cannot be demonstrated, there will be a substantial or cumulative detrimental impact. I believe we would be reaching a cumulative detrimental impact because the amount of development on that side of town. We are removing the last green lung in that area. We are building schools and play areas right on the boundary of the A5 and in my view putting children at risk for their developmental uh, uh, progression moving forward both in terms of mental and physical because it's been proven that pollution can do that to children when they are um, exposed to excessive levels. We need this site 
as it is to provide that green buffer, that little remaining green buffer, to help give those children a place to roam freely without having all the multi-use games areas which have their purpose, purpose but sometimes just a rural walk in amongst um, the land actually benefits someone's well-being far more than visiting a green gym or sitting on the swings. It's, it's horses for courses. But I think this land is needed, Chair, and I don't think, personally, we have met the tests which would justify doing so. So I will be voting against this proposal tonight, Chair, and I would encourage you to do the same. Thank you. Bellway, already comments? Thank you. In terms of the point about um, maintaining the area as, as open space, it's not designated as public open space, it's, it's owned by railways, um, they don't have to allow people to use the site, it's, it's not public open space, it's people just to use for recreation purposes. I said a green lung chair. Uh, right. Any other member? Just hand there. Uh, I got some concern with the education. Uh, although they said they are going to give some money to the primary and secondary schools, existing one, but that may be quite far away from because they have already done one page one, they do. Now they are going to do the th th third page, and they never thought about any primary school uh, in that area where um, where they are going to send the children very far away, like this. She already said. Uh, one parent family, or how they're going to afford to take our children to those schools which they already exist, may be very far away. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Chair. Um, can I just ask in safe the affordable housing split? And how would we assess the housing need? Because they've said what the offers. I presume they've spoken to housing in terms of what we need for those. Yeah. And I am a little concerned in terms of, um, because there's an extra lane off into them that it seems as if it's been pepper positive, and actually it hasn't at all. We've just been lumped into two lumps, and actually that's not what we usually agree here. We agree that it's put over the sides. I'm not concerned overly keen on the design aspect. And there is a comment in terms of detached garages, maybe in towers of not considered to be available for parking. I don't know if you could give me a bit of clarification on that. In terms of garages and drives, we do require all developers now to prove that they can fit a uh, sort of an SUV kind of vehicle into the garage if it's to be considered as a parking space for that property. If they can't get that vehicle in or they're not proposing it to be there, they have to provide sufficient off-street off -street provision in terms of a driveway. And we've assessed that across across this site with our requirements. Um, it fits with phase two and phase one as well um, for consistency. Okay, thank you. Can you address the pepper bottom issue, please? Yeah, um, yeah, you're quite right that the affordable housing is within two areas of the site. Um, housing have been consulted and they see it as it would be perceived to be a uh, better spread than they seem to be on the plan um, and also housing associations like their stock fairly close together which is why housing have accepted that, that proposed layout. Chair, if I can just come back, I'm a little surprised by your comments in terms of housing associations. I've never heard that mentioned before, I've been on family quite a while now. But it certainly isn't pepper pasted, I don't think, it's not how I see pepper pasted, and I've sat on the committee a while. <coughs> um, and in terms of, I'm surprised then they're called detached garages, when actually you can't fit a car into them, it's my comments. Okay, yeah, I, I, um, in, in regard to the pepper potting, yeah, um, <coughs> over the years this house has wanted that for that to happen really, so it is pepper potted over the state. In fairness to the housing associations, they have said in the past, their preference is for them to be contained, sort of contained, so that it's easy for them for maintenance and contact and stuff. 
Now, they have said that in the past. Whether we agree with that and the principle of you know, mixing things together more is something else. Um, I can understand why they want to do it for ease of, you know, their side of things. <coughs> No, all right. Uh, yeah. uh, <coughs> that's all I have the now. Um, Claire, when you were talking right at the beginning, you were saying things about um, cycleways, uh, pavements, uh, streets. You did you did mention about public transport, but I, I don't see anything about public transport down here at all. Not everybody is a driver, so um, this is quite a large area. It's a long walk to um, Reddington Road or wherever. <coughs> um, can you tell me how people who don't drive would be able to access public transport? Um, sorry, I'll answer that on behalf of the County Council. Um, um, this site for 75 dwellings was consulted on with our public transport team, both public transport infrastructure and the service side. They ni neither of them uh, requested a contribution for bus service provision on this site because under phase two um, there is a proposal for a bus to go in and out of that phase. It's, a, it's an actual loop design. So the bus will come in through Bell the access arrangement through Bellway phase one, turn into the phase two, come round in a loop and came get back out this site will be in walkable distance of those bus stops within phase two. As the allocation for HSG1 gets built out, there'll be greater bus penetration through the site as well. So it, in, the, in the interim, there's the phase, the bus service through phase two, and then over time, as the, as the allocation gets built out, there'll be further integration and greater accessibility to bus services. But that's the premise why there isn't a request at the moment in terms of this application. Uh, and just to point out that there are requests from the county council for information packs, etc., to do that. Whether we like that or not, that's happened. Uh, any other member? No? Well, you've all done? Okay, then we'll, we'll test the water on it. <coughs> it's been moved and seconded to grant planning permission subject to a legal agreement and the conditions printed. All those in favour of that? And against? And abstentions? Oh, sorry, did you, sorry, did you have your hand up against it? Can I do it against? Yeah. Just to put down quickly. So I couldn't see it. No, no, I couldn't see it. So that's eight. So that recommendation is not approved. I didn't. Sorry, don't get carried away. It hasn't been reviewed. <laughs> I don't really want to go through what I went through again at the last meeting. Members should know what happens now. For the interest of the public, at the moment, what we had, we had a recommendation that was moved and seconded. The county have voted against that recommendation. It doesn't mean it's been refused. It means it's not been approved. Sounds thing. What has to happen now, and every member around this table will know, is there needs to be another proposal put forward and seconded so that we can debate that and take a decision. I feel I've got to organise a training session for members because clearly they don't understand the process. Councillor um, Chair, I would like to move refusal on the grounds that the housing numbers are outside of those proposed under the emerging borough plan and that the Borough Council is proposing that it will have a five-year housing land supply under the Emerging Borough Plan. Therefore, the test of demonstrable need for building on EMV3 will not be met and that we believe there would be a cumulative detrimental impact on the wider area if this was to be approved. <coughs> Sorry? I'll second that. Well, I may, I may need to go through it. 
Did you get the exact wording of that? Have you already got that printed out? No, I've, I've come here afresh and looked at it. I wasn't trying to catch yeah. it. It would have been helpful. Between us, we've probably got we've got it down between us. Okay, right. Um, right. Yeah. Could you just read out what you've got so that we know that's what Councillor Wilson is proposing? That the housing numbers fall outside the emerging borough plan, that the council will have a five-year land supply upon approved um, upon adoption of the borough plan, and um, that the there is no um, no requirement to develop. Um, it's against policy ENV three, and there's no demonstrable need for the housing. In in essence, mm -hmm. can I comment? On that. No, not yet. Okay. <laughs> Is that seconded? <coughs> okay, that's the side. <coughs> right. I think everybody's heard those things. So it's been moved and seconded. That reason for refusal. You wanted to make a comment yeah. on that? Um, I think there might be a slight problem including policy ENV3. Um, it's clear in current government um, guidance that policies which control the land supply um, for housing development, such as restricting it outside of Greenbelt, are no longer to be considered extant policies. So this, although it is a saved policy, is not a policy that we can actually use to refuse a planning application on. It's been made clear to us in government guidance that that is something we can't put on. And we've had inspectors' decisions that back that up as well. So I would advise against including ENV3 in any reason for refusal that you make. So the other parts you could include, but not including ENV3 as a policy. So we can rely on it to approve, but we can't <coughs> rely on it to refuse. You can rely on it to approve something which com which conforms with the countryside guidance, but because it's a land restriction policy that controls where new housing development can go, it's now deemed out of date um, by the government and therefore we can't use it as a reason for refusal. It's very confusing, I know. No. Um, Right. But again, like the last, like the previous meeting, we've received the officers' professional advice on the reasons for refusal, and they're, they're saying that that part in regard to EM3 can't be supported. Can I just um, add as well? Sorry. Um, it would be also difficult for us to justify a reason for refusal based on the fact that we will have a five year land supply. The five-year land supply for the borough plan includes some greenbelt sites. So we have to make sure that when we get to that adoption phase that those greenbelt sites are actually included. So we can't refuse something based on something that might happen in the future. We have to look at the situation as is today. If I may, Chair. Thank you, Chair. However, and this is where I think people can rely on and this is how policy is always done. People can rely on certain aspects if it supports them and, and other aspects and then refuse it if they don't because mm. we have gone to the planning inspector and said we believe we can deliver those sites, including the Greenbelt sites, mm -hmm. if our plan is approved. So either we have confidence in our plan as a council or we don't. Now, we are this close to getting it approved, assuming, as I said before, there are no... Uh, issues the inspector raises therefore and it went to cabinet as well we must have faith and confidence that we can deliver those sites including the green belt sites the developers went to the inspection and said they were confident that those sites could be delivered one of them's in my own patch and i sat there and he said i believe we can deliver the 621 off golf drive so we can't have it both ways chair in my opinion it's <coughs> either it can be delivered or it can't. If it can't, then we shouldn't have gone to the inspector and said we can deliver it. That's how I look at it, Chair. We either believe in our borough plan or we don't. And I would still support that reason for refusal. If, it do if the inspector doesn't like it, if it's appealed, let him. I remember being sat in the other place 
and former councillor Tony Lloyd saying, you know what, sometimes we have to do the right thing by the residents, go to appeal, and if we lose, at least we've done the right thing by the taxpayers of this borough. Absolutely. And I think yeah. this is a case where we should do that, Chair. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's fine as long as members are aware of the considerations about planning costs and appeals and, uh, you know, uh, costs being awarded against us. I've never argued about that. As long as members are prepared to attend uh, hearings, uh, appeal hearings, where officers are unable to, to do so. Um, you're all right with that at the moment. Uh, Councillor Smith. No, no, I was just, uh, I'm in total agreement with, with everything Councillor Wilson said. And sometimes I think we have to stand up and be counted for the people that elected us to do the right thing by them. Yeah. 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 Any other member? No? Okay. Um, my point of view is uh, I'm kind of probably more of a, a, a simple person than all the technicalities. and. Um, I'm pretty certain that regardless of all the technical reasons that are being looked at, any applicant developer can bring an application to us that we have to consider regardless of, of the local plan and whatever's in it and regardless of any other issues. Uh, yes, the plan will guide us to a degree, uh, but it doesn't prevent anybody putting in an application for any land. Is that fair? Okay. Uh, <coughs> earlier on, uh, I heard there were some concerns about um, some of the accuracy of the report uh, and otherwise. And if it had come forward at that time, I would have supported the deferment to make sure we got all the information in front of us. However, we've got something else in front of us now. Personally, I will, I will vote against that because of the, the reasons that have been put by officers, etc. Um, but we'll see where we go. <coughs> Members are all aware of the implications. Uh, we've got the, the wording as accurately as needed. Uh, all members, uh, sorry, all those All those in favour of refusal of the application for the, uh, the reason said. And against? No abstentions. Applications refused. Okay, um, takes us to the number three, Hillsdale Barrel Road. Thanks. Thank you. 
next application is for the erection of 276 residential dwellings, including vehicle accesses, drainage, public open space, landscaping, and other associated uses. <coughs> There has been a previous outline application and subsequent reserve matters which were approved at committee for 262 dwellings and that was the boundary of that application site. Um, the application site for this current application excludes some of that site that already has permission. So this area here is excluded. But the remaining part of the site would be developed under the previous approval therefore giving a total of 329 dwellings across the whole site. A number of objections have been received, raising issues such as increased traffic and the severe impact on highway safety, pressure on existing services, loss of trees and impact on ecology. Notwithstanding the objections received, the application is also being requ requested to reported to committee at the request of Councillor Gazane. The principle of residential development on the site has been established through the previous permissions. It has acknowledged that the council does not have a delivery of five-year housing land supply, which this development would contribute to. In terms of affordable housing, 63 dwellings would be affordable, which equates to 23%. And they're shown <coughs> the blue areas outlined on the, on the screen. However, in the area of the site excluded from this application, there is an over-provision of affordable housing, 36% um, on this part here. And taking the site as a whole, the threshold of 25% to be affordable is met. In relation to residential amenity, distance standards are generally met in relation to properties outside the site. Um, plot 161 has, which is down this section of the site, has rear habitable <coughs> windows within 20 metres of the ground floor windows of number 7 Swinburne close. However, the plots are orientated at, at such an acute angle to each other, um, it would mean that view would, would be very obscure and loss of privacy would not be a significant issue. In relation to inside the site, distance standards are generally met. There are some shortfalls for window-to-window -window separation distances, but these are across the road where a reduction in distance standards is acceptable. Some plots have detached garages on both boundaries. Whilst this is acceptable in terms of visual amenity, as it means that garages are not dominating the street scene, it could have an impact on the amenities of some of the proposed plots. However, the design of the garages <coughs> reduces the impact including the eaves height of approximately 2.3 metres, which is not significantly higher than a boundary fence, with the roof sloping away from the boundary. In terms of visual amenity, the site entrance and views on Plowhill Road will be the same as been previously approved and partially built to reserve matters for the planning commission. Within the site, there will be some differences to that which was previously approved, but the look and feel of the internal roads and street seed will stay largely the same. Some plots have been altered to achieve a larger number of plots on the site, and as, much, and as such, much smaller properties will appear within the street. The appearance, though, will still be of modern estate roads with a mixture of house types, including single-storey bungalows, smaller attached properties, and larger detached ones. Designs are consistent throughout the site, and although they vary in styles and features, the overall design ethos blends well across the site. In relation to highway safety, Warwick County Council Highways have objected to the proposal. The main focus of the Highway Authority's concerns focus on the Colesill Road, Plowhill Road junction. They have questioned the modelling that has been used and whether other committee developments have been considered. They consider that the development would have a significant impact upon the operation of the junction, notably the Plough Hill Road arm. Any further growth will cause the junction to operate over its operational capacity to the detriment of the safe and efficient operation of the highway network. The, <coughs> excuse me, this leads to motorists utilising <coughs> smaller and inappropriate gaps to exit, which in turn increases the potential for accidents to occur. In this case, this would be exacerbated by the limited visibility available. 
They also point out that no suitable further mit mitigation above what has already been committed can be undertaken at this junction without a substantial infrastructure up upgrade of the surrounding network. This impact on highway safety is considered to be significant and weighs significantly against the application. In terms of trees and ecology, the proposed layout would result in the loss of an impact of some ad additional trees over and above those original affected by the approved scheme. Parks and countryside have objected to the loss of these trees um, as the layout will affect some of the existing trees and possibly reprotection zones. In relation to flooding, both the Environment Agency and the County Flood Risk Team have been consulted but have not responded. On the previously approved schemes, they both raised no objection to subject to conditions requiring a detailed drainage design and maintenance plan to be submitted. It is therefore considered that the proposal will have no significant impact on flood risk or surface water drainage, and if necessary, conditions similar to the previous approval on site could be included. A number of 106 contributions have been requested, including sports development, plain open space, house provision, affordable housing, libraries and education. The recommendation is one of refusal on highway safety grounds as detailed on the agenda. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Claire. Councillor Croft. Can you hear me from back here? I can. So I tend to bump on you know I'm like. Uh, I've got too much to add. I just uh, speak to ask that you reject the proposal because I think that uh, the highways issues appraisal five point five is going to be about right on the uh, traffic issues. We shouldn't be supporting any development in that part of town without any sort of traffic mitigation. Uh, the, the report mentions that Gallic Alban has a sort of unique village character and landscape, but I think more important is that its highway network still hasn't quite caught up from being a village to being a much larger village than it is now. And uh, it has essentially the same road network without, which hasn't been. Um, which hasn't uh, been upgraded for the capacity of the houses that are now there. It's got three roads in and out of it, and the Flat Hill side has only got one road. And we've already seen three times this year what happens when uh, the road gets closed, uh, and it completely snarls up the transport network on that side of the town. Uh, so increasing the house numbers, even though it's more than that, wouldn't be sustainable, uh, especially as the report says at the junction of Culver Road and Flat Hill Road. Uh, and there's a, a great deal of complaints now. Uh, from residents because of the tight turns, the lack of visibility, the, uh, uh, the, the high volume of traffic, uh, and that's just things exist now. I and mean, we can't take the application in isolation. We've already got the application the other end of the road being built. There's application in Nancy Common, and I believe a few weeks ago this committee approved uh, an entrance to a, to a development site uh, just opposite Whitestaff Drive, so that's going to create its own problems. So. Because of that, because of the uh, increase in the strain on the road network capacity, because of the issue of public safety for the uh, uh, for, for pedestrians, I would ask that the committee re review the application, uh, especially as on page 74, the Highways Authority did not consider that any mitigation could be consulted on the entire Thank you. Are there any points of clarification? No? Anything to come back on? No? Just to, in terms of the new national planning policy framework which came out after uh, the Highway Authority wrote, wrote its response, under paragraph 109, the new framework, it clearly states highway safety is a separate issue to the operation of the highway network. That is to our advantage because it means we therefore technically have two points of refusal rather than just the one that we used to have under paragraph 35 of the national planning policy framework. <coughs> now, the old one would just be superseded. <coughs> Okay, thank you. Uh, again, to enable debate to take place, can I move the recommendation, which is to refuse planning permission for the reasons as printed? Is that seconded? Seconded. Well, everybody. <laughs> uh, any member? Can I, can I just say, because when, um, <coughs> when Councillor Croft was speaking, and speaking about the village, I actually thought he was speaking about Hawkesbury for a moment uh, because of the similar situation down there, yet we had a different um, response from the county highways on that one. But I think we all recognise the difficulties down there. But I hijacked that bit first. Uh, <laughs> any other member? 
No. The, uh, as I say, the recommendation is to refuse the board's permission. All those in favour of that? That's unanimous. Yes. <coughs> we can move on to item number five, please. If we can jump number five. <coughs> Item number five two two one Road. Number four. Number four. Yeah. And we don't have any speakers down from the middle. objection have been received in relation to loss of privacy, loss of light and that it's not in keeping with the surrounding properties. Number 24, Stonewell Crescent, which is that property there, is to the rear of number 221. There would be approximately 36 metres from the rear roof alteration of number 221 to the rear of number 24. The residential design guide normally <coughs> seeks 30 metres separation between three-storey development and neighbouring original habitable room windows. As this separation distance is met, it is not considered that there will be any loss of privacy to the rear neighbour at number 24 Stonewall Crescent. It complies with distance standards to the rear garden area as there, are, as there is approximately 11 metres separation, whereas the design guide requires 7 metres. Number 221 Lutterworth Road, is that property there? Sorry, 219, I should say. Um, has one side facing window on the first floor and two side facing windows on the ground floor. The two ground floor windows serve a hall and toilet respectively, and the first floor window serves a landing, none of which are protected. This property also has two rear-facing windows. The closest one to the grounds with the applicants is for the kitchen. However, this kitchen is part of an extension and would therefore not be really protected. Number 223, that property there, has um, six side-facing windows towards the applicant's property. However, only one of these windows is for a habitable room and serves a bedroom or study. There is also, this room also has a front facing window of the same size to the room, which would be the primary window, meaning the side facing window is not protected. The extension would still be in line with the original rear wall of, the, of that property and would not infringe any 45 or 60 degree guidelines. In terms of visual amenity, the existing house, and it's that property there, has a hipped roof with a ridge height of approximately 8 metres. As a result of the proposal, the front part of the property would have a standard pitch roof, that's the front there, with a ridge height of approximately 8.9 metres. It is not considered that this would appear out of character or over prominent, particularly as there is a variety of house and roof styles and different heights along Lutterworth Road. The roof to the rear would have a different pitch, but would not and would not be in keeping um, with the main roof to the front. However, this would not be significantly visible in the street scene and would therefore not have a significant impact on visual amenity. The recommendation is therefore approval. Thank you, Taylor. <coughs> Thank you. Mr Chairman, Councillors, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm here to support the application as agent for my client 
and simply wish to say thank you for the uh, other officers for their diligence and uh, having worked through with us. And the, the design that we put together initially was deliberately in, in keeping and in compliance with the residential design guide. We're here to support the application and be grateful for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any points of clarification? In that case, to enable the debate to take place, can I move the recommendation which is to grant planning permission subject to the conditions printed? Is that seconded? Seconded. Any member wish to speak? Yes, the words. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. This application does sit within my ward, and I have to say that I have received no responses from any member of the public about this. And actually, behind that property on Stonewell Crescent, there is a very active residence association there. And believe me, if there's a planning application they don't like, they're pretty quick to get, it, get in touch with me. Um, so the vast majority of the residents on Stonewell haven't complained either. <coughs> as someone who has walked that entire length, and more importantly the length of those drives as well, um, when leafleting, it isn't going to make any odds to the overall street scene chair. If you walk up and down there leafleting or, or whatever, you'll be quite surprised actually at the variety of the different types of buildings there now with, with what different people have done over the years. It's quite a hodgepodge really of different styles going up there. So I don't think it would have any detrimental impact and also it is a significant way away from the actual road itself um, because there are large drives and also there's quite a bit of um, grass between the verge and the uh, driveway itself. I remember leafleting the house actually, that's why um, I, mem I remember it quite well. And I don't think anyone who's driving past it or walking down to the SO shops or um, uh, the spa would actually particularly notice what's going on once it's done. So I'm quite happy to support it. No one in particular has come and complained to me about it. And in the not the recommendation is as printed <coughs> to grant planning permission. All those in favour of that? That's unanimous. That's approved. So if we can go back to item number four. Thank you for your patience. If we go back to item number four, then two Woodlands Road levels. is for a first floor extension to the sides, so that's located in there, a single story extension to the sides, which is located here, it's on that side of the building, and a single story extension to the rear there, so in that part of the building. The first floor extension to the sign will be to the right of the existing property when viewed from the road and it will be built over an existing single storey element with a ridge height the same as the main building. It will provide additional bedroom accommodation and a ba uh, bathroom. The single storey extension to the side will be to the left of the existing property, <coughs> so here. It will project off the existing side, side elevation by 3 metres and have a depth of 6.9 metres. It will have a dual pitch roof and a ridge height of 4.8 metres. It will provide a kitchen. A single storey extension to the rear will project off an existing single storey element and provide additional storage area for the shop. The application is being reported to committee at the request of Councillor Graham. In terms of the impact on residential amenity, two properties most likely to be affected are number 18, Woodlands Road, on there, and number 1, Charles Eaton Road. Number 18, Woodlands Road, is to the north and sits at an angle to the application property. It has a lean-to uh, attached to it at the ground floor, which is not original, and is separated from the main building by the car park that serves the shop. Officers do not consider that, the, that there will be any significant impact on any original windows to habitable rooms. In terms of number one, Charles Eaton, this is to the northwest and also sits at an angle to the application property. It has a single storey rear extension which is not protected. Because of the angle between the two properties, 
The original rear elevation of number one will only directly face the single storey rear extension, which is in here, at a distance <coughs> of 12 and a half metres, which does comply with distance standards in the residential design guide. Warwick County Council Highways have raised no objection. In terms of visual immunity, in terms of the single storey extension to the rear, as it is to the rear of the existing building, it would not be visible from Woodland Road itself. In relation to the first floor extension, which is this element here, which we located here, this element is to the north of the existing building and will, will be built over an existing storey, single storey element. It will be barely visible when approaching from the south along Newtown Road and turning onto Woodland Road and would almost totally shield you by the mass of the existing building. It would be visible when approaching from the north, so here, from, from Woodland Road, but the view of it would be initially obscured by the two properties which are located on the bend, numbers 18 and 20 Woodland Road. Officers do not consider that it would detract from the character of the area, appear intrusive, or dominate the existing property. In terms of the single storey extension to the side, this element is to the south of the building and will, will be built of the existing two storey side elevation that will be located in here, on this side elevation here. It would not be visible when approached from the north along Woodlands Road. However, it would be highly visible when approached from the south along Newtown Road and when turning into Woodlands Road along this location on here as there is an open view for about 35 metres across the car park attached to the doctor's surgery. Given the general arrangement and because of the comparative openness of this part of the road, officers consider that by virtue of its scale and sighting, it will be an incongruous and prominent feature in the street scene. The recommendation is therefore a refusal <coughs> on the grounds of the impact of the single storey side extension on the street scene and visual amenities of the area. Thank you. Now to enable debate take place, I move the recommendation which is to re re refuse planning permission for the reasons as printed. Is that seconded? Second, okay. Any member? <coughs> yes, Fran. Thank you, Chair. Um, looking through the various comments, uh, consultation responses, and listening to what the um, planning officer has just told us. I feel that the um, uh, reasons for refusal don't stack up well against the reasons for approval in this case. Uh, there's no objections from county highways and um, environmental health. Uh, no neighbour responses uh, in the negative. Uh, I feel that um, the planning committee has earlier voted um, through an extension that's far more prominent than what is before us now. Uh, I don't feel that it would negatively affect the area because this is a um, one-off um, sort of uh, extension rather than something that's out of keeping with the area because uh, there aren't any other buildings like this in the area anyway. <coughs> uh, therefore, um, I'm minded to um, vote against the proposal and uh, suggest uh, voting uh, to approve this particular application. Any other member? Thank you, Chair. Um, I know this site extremely well um, for two reasons. A, my doctor, that used to be my doctor's surgery for 25 odd years, and secondly, my Great grandmother used to live until she um, passed away. Lived around the corner on Charles Eden Road for um, thirty odd years. So it, quite a lot of time I've spent in, in in that area, and I have to respectfully disagree with my colleague. I think it would actually be quite dangerous that proposed um, extension before the doctor put up um, those fencing railings. It was difficult to get out and to have a proper visibility splay. You would have to reverse out quite often of the doctor's surgery. And um, erecting those fences, which I, I understand the reasons why he did so, but it reduced the visibility splay, particularly for exiting in a reverse manner. 
and you never know, and that always used to frighten me uh, driving out of that um, doctor's surgery actually, you never know what car is coming down the other way of that. It's not quite, it's, a, it's not a formal road I suppose, it's more like an oversized jitty really, but you never know <coughs> which car is coming round, um, and it's not a one-way system. So it would actually make more sense for that road to be a one-way system going out through the doctor's surgery round up Charles Eaton Road because that's far more safer, but it isn't actually arranged like that, so you never know what's coming through. And there are quite often deliveries of uh, medical supplies there. The people who use that corner shop, and it's the first I actually knew actually that that corner shop wasn't actually officially designated as a corner shop until I reread the papers, but the people who use that corner shop are the most insensitive people around because the way they park around there is a nightmare. When that doctor's surgery is full, you have both the people using the shop and the doctor's surgery right on that corner going round towards the play area as well, which makes it another dangerous way going that way. So I think that would harm even more the visibility display for drivers being able to act, go in and out of them. I think it would be incongruous with the street scene. Um, so I can't support a chair. First hand knowledge, I really fear what would happen on that corner. <coughs> so, Lorraine, I'd like to support what Councillor Wilson has just said. I, I too know that area and where the doctor's surgery is and where that actual shop is, there's a really <coughs> nasty bend on the road and the roads are quite narrow as well. So even in an ordinary day, you've, you, you know, there's no passing. You've got to let one car go first and then the other. And there are lots of children that play around that area as well. And there is a <coughs> playground where the, the children will just run out or run across the road without thinking. So it would cause um, a lot of congestion with deliveries from both the doctor's surgery and that shop as well. And, um, and I, 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 the side um, extension just wouldn't help in, in that matter at all. Okay, thank you. But for Can I ask, I'm a new councillor, so I just need to ask something. If not, they not have yet, not yet. Oh, sorry. Sorry. No, sorry. sorry. As a new councillor, can I ask, if planning permission hasn't been given, how are they allowed them to have a shop? It's established over a long period of time. So it happened, we never received any complaints about it, and therefore it becomes an established use. Um, so we never officially granted planning permission, but it has been there for 30 years or so. Okay, thank you. Okay, I mean, for what it's worth, I absolutely agree with the things about the highways, and I'm surprised, again, We've got nothing from the county highway people with them concerns because clearly that that corner particularly and when vehicles pull up outside the shop it is a is a risk. We haven't got that as a reason for refusal. We've got uh, a, a different one, and I have to say I think probably everybody in this room will know of that shop on the corner because if you want to come from the Arby Towers end of Nuneaton to Bedworth or from Bedworth to Ivy Town. That's the way a lot of people go because of not being, you know, not being able to move down the travel forward. Hopefully when the new road's been done, if that happens, um, that will relieve some of the stuff here, hopefully, and get us down to uh, the Arby side of Dunedin better. Um, anyway, <coughs> regardless of that, we've got the reasons for refusal. Unless there's any other member wants to speak, I'll take the vote. The, the, the recommendation is to refuse planning permission. All those in favour of that? And against? Okay, that's, that's refused. Uh, we don't have any items of any other business, so that concludes the meeting. Thank you very much for your attendance.